My name is Rebecca Lewin. I'm the exhibition curator at the Serpentine Galleries, and we're standing inside Pierre Wieck's new exhibition called Umwelt. I'm standing in front of one of five large scale LED walls that are distributed throughout the gallery. What's showing on the walls are thousands and thousands of images appearing and being succeeded by new images very, very quickly. And this flickering sort of almost video has been constructed entirely by a technology. They are doing an MRI of someone uh, who is uh, thinking about an image and they take a brain wave at the moment that person is, is thinking about the image. And this brain wave becomes a pattern and this pattern go through multi uh, neural network which have a data bank of millions of images. To me it was very fascinating that in a lazy poetic way I could say I just need to think and it print. I, I just think it and then it, it happened in the serpentine. So the end result that we're seeing here has gone through several stages that began with a human, went to a human, went through one machine process, went through another machine process and has been collaged together to try and create an approximation of what that origin image was. And what was so interesting was that back and forth between the biotic and abiotic, the human, the biological and the machine. So you might see as I'm talking that there are small insects flying around. And what we've done is to bring a community of blue bottle flies into the exhibition space. The life cycle of a blue bottle fly is very short, it's only two weeks, and the exhibition itself is several months long. So there is a short period of time taking place within this longer period of time, which of course itself is only temporary, that's the sort of nature of an exhibition. The experience of being around a number of insects inside of an exhibition is unusual, it's unsettling for a visitor. There is not a separation or a hierarchy, you could say, between the human and animal and machine. We all happen to be coexisting within this gallery space. There are a number of elements in the exhibition that you can't see immediately. There are conditions within the space that have been altered. The lighting is very specific in each space and because daylight is being allowed in, it changes over the course of the day. The colour of some of the light is also slightly different. There are also scents discernible as you move through different spaces. And some of them might have associations that one visitor will have that are different from the next. So the kinds of memories that are provoked by the smells are very specific to the individual. And in a way, that's a parallel to what happens when we're looking at the images on the screens, that the set of associations and memories that might be provoked by a particular form on a screen for me might be very different than how they are interpreted by you. The result of that is something that I think reminds us that we are all prone to look for a certain kind of meaning or a certain set of meanings and to project them as being perhaps a universal interpretation when really that's something that is very very specific to us and our memories. The other conditions that are slightly different in the space are the sound. You can hear that there is this very low, slightly muffled audio that's existing throughout the galleries. Like the images, the sound originates in a set of data produced by brain activity and translated, this time not into images, but into sounds. So it creates this amazing landscape that you're moving through, listening to, and, as well as looking at. There's one last element that's worth mentioning as part of how the conditions in the space have been changed, and that is the sanding that's been done, the removal of layers of paint within the gallery, beginning, let's say, in the present with the latest coat of white paint, and moving back through time as more layers have been removed, back, I think it's nearly 20 years layers and layers and layers of exhibitions um, being revealed again and the dust from that sanding has been left on the floor. It's a motif that Pierre has used many times in his work and there's a timekeeper. This is a work where a single circular area of the wall is sanded back much like the rings of a tree. But this central wall that has this um, incredibly fluid set of shapes that bleed into each other is something that happened really unintentionally over the course of the installation. 
the shapes and forms started to resemble some of the images or some of this paradolic, this tendency to find meaning in, in abstraction, was happening for, for us and for Pierre in a very similar way as it does within the films and the process of watching the films. So the decision to keep this very unusual biological sort of form um, across the entirety of that uh, wall is something that, that remained then and became a part of the exhibition. So the work do not need the public. It's not made for us, it's not addressed to us. He doesn't need the gaze to exist. He can live his life as a work uh, without that need. The title of the exhibition is Umwelt. It's a play on the word Umwelt. That itself is a term that was coined by Jacob von Oekskul. He used it to describe the experience of being in the world as specific to each biological entity. The human view of the world is shaped by the fact that our eyes are forward-looking, that we can see 180 degrees and no more, that we can see a certain range of colours, that we tie image and sound together because of the position of our ears on our heads, that we use touch and smell and our own movement to calibrate the world around us. And of course, even though we can say that from person to person, each person's umwelt is specific to them, a human umwelt is very different than a fly's, for example. The addition of the extra U on the front of Umwelt, the Umwelt, in the title is to have a nod towards the idea of bypassing that process and on Umwelt, the possibility of a connectivity or a communication that can exist between entities, between human and machine, for example, would suggest that an Umwelt is both present in both of those things but if we can bypass the senses, then we have the potential to be able to see and understand and interpret each other's thoughts and way of thinking. It's running until February the 10th in 2019. <laughs>